and I bring you greetings from our Honorable Minister, Dr. Wal and my project coordinator, Nana Sapo Kantanka. Before I hit at your question, I would like to say that the vision of the government and the commitment of the minister is to position tourism as the number one contributor to our GDP. Mm. That will be a mirage unless we look at the tourism offerings and see how we can diversify it in a way to be able to reach the evoke set of our visitors and cause them to visit and visit and visit because the more they visit, the more money we get. We know in literature that when we say that we're talking about customer service and all that, it costs 15 times more to attract a new customer. And if you can get the existing ones, why not? And to your question specifically, when we look at um, the museum, really, it's more about where the man, Kwame Nkrumah, is actually buried. Mm -hmm. But there are other facilities there. So to look at the nomenclature again, it was important for us to be able to really look at the whole offerings at a, you know, at a place and give it a befitting name. And that's why we call it the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. And the memorial there also is significant because of the unique contributions uh, of the man and his personality and the ramifications of it for Africa's renaissance, African Pan-Africanism, and the revivification of the African soul towards the new African personality. And most importantly, the kind of traction that we want to cause coming here because, like I hinted, tourism has become the number one contributor to our GDP. It's a vision. It's going to be a mirage unless we do something about it. And that is why the government has been adamantine about it, unwavering through the commitment of our sector minister to make sure that we have the attractions that are able to really cause people to go to places, Spain, and really we get in the revenue from it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautifully mm. articulated. I like the idea of a vision. I like the reification efforts. I like the fact that the dream is to make um, tourism the number one contributor to GDP. Um, I believe the country has the, his, uh, the, the history, the culture, um, and the landscape to support this. Uh, but of course, one of the biggest challenges has always been the infrastructure around the tourism, the, the, the offering. Um, what went into making the Kwame Nkrumah National Park the talk of the town as we have it now? I mean, everywhere on social media, people are posting photos, people are looking forward to going there. And the commentary is that this is world class. What went into it? I have always uh, said to people that every grand thing comes from an idea, a determination and commitment. And that is what the government has shown. The ability for us to be able to really look at uh, what we can do as people, beyond all the boundaries we can think about, making that palpable statement in terms of our development. And to me, the Kwame Nkrumah edifice is the epitome of the statement mm. just mentioned. Mm. Now, looking at um, why Kwame Nkrumah, why Kwame Nkrumah, why Kwame Nkrumah, it is actually part of the beat. But you may say it's a big beat, but we are doing other things. For example, when you look at the northern part of the southern, because the Ghana Tourism Development Project initiated by the MPP government through the sector minister was to actually increase tourism performance across targeted destinations. And I kind of underline the targeted, targeted destinations around the country. That strategic focus is what we look at when we look at what are some of our comparative advantages. For example, Ghana is home to 75% of all the slave edifices. 75%. The oldest European edifice is here with us in Elmina, 1492. So when it comes to the competitive urge, the comparative advantage, the things that we have to be able to even drive, you know, home travel, route travel, diaspora travel, yada, yada. The annals is honest to be able to commoditize this. We talk about the rich Guinean heritage in terms of our culture, the festivals, the songs, and all that. What comes to fore is, how do we even the want the conviviality 
of the Guinean, mm. the proverbial hospitality. How do we commoditize it to be in tandem with we being the most peaceful country in mainland Africa? Mm. How do we do that? We are number one now in West Africa for tourism. Like I said, the marketplace is moving at a nanosecond pace. If you don't take charge of the dynamism in the system, your first position will be taken by others. And that is why we want to really look at what we have and kind of create a sustainable competitive edge for the industry by building upon what we have, but at the same time being novel and creative with it. So at the end of the day, it becomes quite difficult for people who want to copy from us to have really a very hard day copying from us because we've got everything. We've got everything. Like I said, Ghana, for example, is part of the top 25 African countries with richness and reality in biodiversity, the fauna and flora. When you go to Mali, Mali National Park is bigger than Greater Accra by geographic size. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's how it is. Well, I've been and there, but I never thought about the yeah. size. <laughs> yes, yes. So you can see how we are looking at, under the Ghana Tourism Development Project, we are looking at touching Mali, Kakum, Shah Hills, any other thing to do with our richness in terms of even the ecology, the ecological tourism, we are looking at that. Then, who hasn't taken Jollof? Mm. You see, so gastronomic tourism or culinary tourism is also a big thing. We have epithet, stupendous, rich, you know, food heritage, you see, and we need to be able to let that enter the minds of our young ones in the words of Martin Luther King, that adds to their somebodiness, and it's a big thing that this ministry is looking at, and that is why to focus on tourism will be inchoate. We are looking at the amalgam, tourism, art, and culture, for them to work peri pursue together. So that at the end of the day, whatever we create here for the industry is something that is very unique to Ghana, but at the same time with a global touch to it. Mm. Yes. And the LI 2393 is supposed to create some standard of service across the country. And the ministry, through the commitment of the minister, is making sure that all the hospitality, art and culture establishments have some semblance of training that actually help all of us at the end of the day, to have that moment of truth that is formidable, that reduces cognitive dissonance, that at the end of the day also help repeat visit. Yes, I'm, I'm very glad you've described the uh, Professor Shum, this, if you like, a, an organic whole working on many different levels. As you say, it's, uh, it's not just tourism, it's how it permeates through society so that you're providing the experience, mm. the, the specialness at every level. And I'm astonished to hear you say that uh, Ghana's number one in tourism in West Africa. We've outstripped even Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal, places like that? Yeah, I mean... In terms of visitor numbers? Yes, we have. We have. For the last... Yeah, yeah, yeah. According to the Economic Forum, World Economic Forum, we are the number one. And wow. why not? We shouldn't be surprised. Like I said earlier, when you go to Gori Island in sure. Senegal, you look at it and you compare it to Kristenborg here, Elmina and mm. Castle, you just like... What about it? Okay, <laughs> not to denigrate it in any way, but you see that we have a lot that we can really listen. But we have been suffering from the productivist paradigm, the kind of entrenched position with what is in the soil mm. and what is on top of it mm -hmm. our cocoa, our gold, and now the oil. Mm -hmm. And now, with the vision mm -hmm. of the president, we realize that our economic transformation must come from the soul and the minds of Africans. Yes, and, we, and that's yeah. what I partly wanted mm. to get onto mm. because we had a comment from a mm. listener earlier mm. on in the show saying, why is all this money being spent on tourism when there are children sitting, uh, uh, you know, under trees? Uh, they don't have school, you know, classroom units. Uh, our, our hospitals are in need of repair. We, we need to pursue Agenda 111. Our roads are in need of repair. We even run a road campaign here at SRC. So you're talking about an investment in what a lot of people think is an intangible. But the point was very usefully made at the launch yesterday at the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park about how uh, tourism benefits all sectors of society, all ages, both genders, all classes. Everybody can have a stake in that. The perception of Ghana and tourism to date, though, um, has been that uh, with a few honorable exceptions who give themselves an exclusive 
super hideaway holloway at hideaway at a, an exclusive retreat perhaps in the western region that it's a backpacker market so it's young people in their teens or their 20s taking a gap year out and they come they're prepared to ride rough take the trotros discover beautiful jewels hidden parts of our country like our waterfalls that even we who live here don't know but how do you turn that around to attract the kind of person who is interested in specifically cultural and intellectual tourism historical tourism which is what you're presenting really mm. with the Kwame Nkrumah mm. Memorial mm. Mm. great yes so we talk about Kwame Nkrumah we talk about political heritage but it goes beyond political heritage. It hit at the African soul. Who are we? And if we don't know ourselves, whatever we do, we'll be carried by the wind into oblivion. The job of tourism, art and culture through the vision of government and our minister and all those working with us, the stakeholders and the larger bodies, including <laughs> people like you. Even people it, in the media. Exactly, yes. <laughs> yes. You know, is to ensure that we know our somebodyness. Mm. We must be able to carve that image palpable, clear in our souls. And that is why I say that tourism goes beyond the pecuniary benefits. Mm. It is more about finding our spirituality, our culture, our intellectuality, the African genius. is about we being the beacon to our own self, reflecting our own self so that we can become what God has created us to be. And that is why I look at tourism and I, I look at tourism and I see a doctor with many fields, <laughs> like Ihotep, <laughs> many fields. <laughs> so, Multi-sectoral doctor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and that, yeah. that's how beautiful it is. Mm. But we don't bear anybody with questions like that, why wasting money that it needs education. People must be educated, those who don't know much about tourism. Because when you go to tourism, tourism like that little kid that came in and people are doing medicine, people are doing pharmacy, did that. At K University where I taught for about over ten years, or nearly ten years, when some student they meet what course are you offering? Some of them were shy to say tourism. It's like a female calls and all oh, and I always mm -hmm. tell them that how could it be I'm not here to brag you know but I'm, I'm a lecturer for tourism do I look dumb to you you see so it's about what tourism can do tourism is just not entertainment and dancing and all that there's more to tourism hospitality art and culture we need to be able to carry all of them the film industry the arts industry and all of that together. So, uh, like I said, is a doctor with a lot of tools. With a lot of yes. tools, absolutely. Yes. I mean, uh, one of the things, sorry, Nanea, I'm just jumping in. I, I'm just curious about, um, you know, there's, there's a certain level of, I don't know whether to call it service levels, but you go to places, one of the biggest challenges people have, and even locally, uh, when you travel across the country is the level of service because you can have the infrastructure you can have the paved roads but people only go places where they feel appreciated and if the quality of the service is not great then it has a negative impact on the overall vision how is this all important thing about service levels going to be addressed as we aim for tourism being the number one contributor to GDP Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You see, no matter how hard your punch is, if you are not trained well in the rink, you're going to gas out and somebody's going to beat you. Ghana has the bedrock of being convivial, warm, and all that. But to channel that into a sharp edge for people to really feel our soul everywhere they go, it needs training. And I can tell you for a fact mm -hmm. that with our stakeholders and the ministry, you know, the coordinator and everybody. We are seeking to really give various levels of capacity building. You know, we've got some trainings for our stakeholders in the hospitality, the art and all that. Why do we do this? Because anytime you encounter a project, you know, a product, especially service, service is actually on the three P's, personnel, process, and the physical ambience, mm -hmm. which we have now, the heart 
infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But the soft component, the asters, the pearl, is what we're looking at. So, for example, we look at professionalism. How do we actually let people exude professionalism at the place? I was at Gobo in South Africa, and the security person was actually a female. You see, changing even the gender issue of a masculine person, like trying to command you around and all that. These are soft things that we do. I'll evoke another one. I met a guy in Cape Town, a security guard, and I said, what star is this hotel? He said, look at me and say it. Then I said, five stars? I said, yeah, I look at it, isn't it? You see, we are building confidence in yes. our people. Yes. And that's what we do. We've got trainees at the UGB airs, you know, getting, you know, the lecturers there. Because the thing in Africa is the industry must move in tandem with the classroom. So everywhere we can get facilitators, that could help. We just did, for example, the driver's you know, training session mm -hmm. across the country. It's very important because if you're a visitor, you sit in a taxi and all that. By the time you get to your destination, you're having a little chat with this person. Mm -hmm. If these guys exude some level of professionalism mm -hmm. and, and knowledge about what we have, by the time you even get your accommodation, you're in a way excited, yes, you know, to, to, to do that. So, like I said, we are not just lifting weight to just pump our biceps and triceps. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the whole system mm -hmm. and whatever we can do. But as we say, wonsum, 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 I I'm fascinated by that because one of the comments that we'd had, for example, from colleagues who came from Nairobi to work with us on the Kusi Ideas Festival a couple of years mm. ago was talking about the state of development of the tourism industry in mm. East Africa in general, but Kenya in particular. Uh, Kenyans in tourism focused areas and there are large parts of the country which are all regard themselves as ambassadors mm. for Kenyan tourism so mm. as you said you get in a taxi the taxi driver knows where the hotels are in case mm. you're somebody he picks up at the airport and you're about mm. to ask him for advice uh, he knows where the best nightclubs are he knows where the best restaurants are he knows even about the history of what happened on that corner over there in relation to a wonderful figure like Kwame Nkrumah that we have now uh, just returning for a moment to the question of the Kwame Nkrumah memorial itself because I'm just so fascinated and I'm, I'm just bowled over by the picture you have this wonderful quote at uh, the entrance uh, to the reception area, I think, that says, I'm not African because I was born in Africa, but because Africa was born in me. Uh, a quote by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Now, you kind of have to get that to percolate down through the whole of society. You've spoken about the training things you're, you're doing for people already in the industry, the tour guides, the taxi drivers, the people in hotels and restaurants which are all within the purview of the Ghana Tourism Authority to a certain extent. What about ordinary citizens, uh, the, the kids, the mums and dads who maybe are on half term at the moment with kids at home, some of them getting bored, or uh, the people who are about to go on holiday or have already started their holiday maybe persuading them to take a staycation because as you said it's 15 times more expensive to sell the idea of a visit to somebody who doesn't know about it than somebody who already is already sold thank you thank you you know tourism is economics at the end of the day and business management must actually underpin and underpin such as the Kwame Kwame Memorial Park business management must be I'll come to the quotation because I'm also interested in that mm -hmm. but you know, when last year we got about one million international arrivals, that gave us almost, you know, uh, two million uh, billion, two uh, billion uh, dollars. Yes, dollars. Hmm. You, can, you can imagine that. And we are looking at actually this year receiving 1.5 international arrivals. Oh, 1.5. Yes, this year. Oh, gosh, that is the decent. Mm -hmm. Yes. By 2019, 2019, we did 1.3 international arrivals. But because of the COVID, mm. yes, then we listened. But like I said, we are on the trajectory, getting the numbers in, and things like this already, like Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, is really giving us the big thing. Mm. By 2025, we should be able to generate 6 billion US dollars. That will make tourism become the number one contributor to our GDP. Twice as much as we get from cocoa. Exactly, exactly. Mm. So that is how 
beautiful it is. Mm. You see, if we look at the economic side of it, we had 98,000 people visiting Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. Before the renovation? Yes, before the renovation. And now have. That's 98,000? Yes. And now we have the vision. I have a feeling you're going to hit that 98,000 just this weekend. Exactly. <laughs> so that's why we're saying that the marching orders from our minister is that we should be able to receive one million visitors to the site. Wow. One million. And that is why we we look at it, you know, and it's, it's, it's just beautiful. You look at it and you say, what have we done here? You see, yeah. that can become the catalyst for uh, creating a whole tourism enclave, you know, in the great, in the great Akka region. But, but how are you selling that to mom and pop Mm. kids in schools, teachers. I mean, this must be an obvious one for visits by school parties, mm -hmm. teaching them about exactly. the history of this country, about where they ca they came from and their identity. Yes. Like you said, Africa must be born in us. Mm. You see, for Africa to be born in us is the consciousness of our Africanness, our somebodyness. So somebody could be as black as you can think of as African with all the biological features, but that person can be very much an island to Africa. And that is why we need to be able to let people get to know that Africa goes beyond the biological features that we have. Something spiritual, what Jatri Spivak talks about our strategic essentialisms, the quintessential bulb or the perpetual flame of what it is for you to exude that unique sparkle of your being identified beyond the biological the love for the motherland and the homeland return at is coming telling all the africans in the diaspora and everywhere mm -hmm. ghana is the home ghana is the home ghana is the home and i can tell you for even now we have more europeans in west africa in west africa we have more europeans in accra than everywhere <laughs> so it tells you that we are always people who are loving, you and know, welcoming. And, and welcoming. Mm -hmm. And we need to commoditize that. We need to put a standard to that. And then tell the whole world that we are peaceful. And because we are peaceful, we can then drive on mice, meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions. Ghana can become the hub of mice in Africa. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful things. Now, you know, so there, there's a curious mind of mine is uh, wondering, this is Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. He's the first president or was the first president of our country. And the first prime minister. That's right. <laughs> He's a, a, a lot of firsts. <laughs> um, will we see this kind of um, edifice done for other presidents yeah thank you very much uh, not only for presidents okay ghana has a lot of heroes and sheroes awesome and we must be able to leave a trail that becomes the foundation for others to follow yesterday was a testament to the fact that we need to honor more of our heroes from the vision of the government mm -hmm. and through the commitment of the minister we know for a fact that yesterday's redevelopment and modernization of the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park is not a flash in the pan mm. we as a ministry with all the support that we can get from government and beyond we're endeavor mm -hmm. to ensure that we are able to recognize some cardinal individuals mm -hmm. that have also contributed to Ghana's development, transformation and even Africa's well-being. We're going to do that. So we shouldn't be surprised at all if we have other edifices cutting across from the northern part right down to the south. Because we need our young ones to really have a pillar to look at. And those pillars we must honor. 
It'll be interesting to see if this is the first in a flowering of presidential libraries across the country, not necessarily limited to Accra uh, and other monuments to our heroes and sheroes, as, as you said. Now, this is such a beautiful, a stunning edifice, as you say. You look at it and you just want to be there. Mm. The juxtaposition oh, we're of water. showing it on our um, social media now. So on, it's on facebook.com mm. slash Asasi 99.5. The, the uh, presidential go check it out. library, mm -hmm. the reception area, you know, and, uh, you know, imposing and palatial but without being on some horrible looming scale for mm -hmm. the sake of being mm -hmm. looming. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the wonderful artifacts you have in there, the mm -hmm. 1960s Eero mm -hmm. Limo, which mm -hmm. people obviously bowled <laughs> over by. Uh, there's even a coffin in there, which perhaps you shouldn't get on to. Uh, you've got a <laughs> gift shop, yeah. you know, you've got all sorts of wonderful curios. Um, it's so beautifully uh, imposing and attractive in the first presentation. How are you going to make sure that, physically speaking, the site stays up to that quality of experience? It's well maintained. Thank you very much again. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, has been a kink in our pipe is the culture of maintenance. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to be able to look at that again and see what we can do about it. With Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, there is a blueprint in place to really ensure that this money doesn't become water in a sieve. Mm. You know, we need to be able, in as much as it goes beyond pecuniary benefit, but we know that life does not depend on prayers alone. Mm. depends on material reality. Nobody lives in air. And that put the other on his honest to make sure that we have the management team in place with all the cleaning and other things that you can add on every bit of the castle that we have built, castle in co. The cement, every bit of it is going to be taught through. The soft touch will be in with a hard touch. And the high tech will be in tandem with the high touch. And that is why we look at the modernization, looking at the woman face and everything to it. So that at the end of the day, nobody goes back a year after and say that, look at this, waste of money again. Mm -hmm. No, it's that is not going to happen because we at the ministry with my sector minister, the coordinator, everybody, we see all this. Yesterday I was telling somebody that when you see Fufu said, somebody pounded. Okay? So we are not going to really and just make things just you know go waste like that it will be preposterous myopic and we are not myopic we'll make sure that things are done right right from the word go we have uh, your assurance uh, your firm assurance and your word for it and yes i mean i just say to everybody you must go out and visit the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. Oh, I'm doing if, that today. And if this is a foretaste of uh, other sites of interest to be renovated, remodeled, revamped, represented from our forts and castles exactly. to our, our chicken joints and fufu parlors, we look forward to it. I love the sound of chicken joints. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, this yeah. great, uh, awesome conversation in this segment is broadly brought to you in association with MetaTime Blockchain Technologies, the world's most comprehensive blockchain chain ecosystem join them this month in ghana uh, to discuss the prospects of blockchain technology and the use of cdbc meta time the new standard our profound thanks to professor Eshan for uh, making time to join us in the studio and uh, to make me super giddy and excited about being a local tourist today <laughs> i'm going out <laughs> Nane, are you coming uh i'm going to try i'm definitely right. going to try well, I'm, I'm definitely if going. i'm allowed to follow in your slipstream oh let's go let's go let's go i will i, I, will, I will go slow i'll go slow you, i'll give you a good tour yeah you, you won't be <laughs> reciting speeches all the way through the building uh, now nah, that would be interesting <laughs> that would be interesting but uh professor gabriel Eshan, uh technical advisor ghana tourism development project and uh, the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. We're thankful for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to right. swinging by and checking out the place. Mm. Great stuff. It's uh, four minutes past nine. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, um, we'll unveil this year's grand performance by the Topside Brass Band on their Sassy Breakfast Show. Stay with us. 
I'm Kweku in Shirado and uh, I'm here with Nim. If you don't know what Nim means, it's not Nim, it's Nim Nana Ya Mensa. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe.